This review is of Raritan Golf Course in Locust Grove, Virginia. Locust Grove, Virginia and the Raritan Golf Course are down on Route 3, about 10 miles northwest of Fredericksburg, heading back towards Culpeper. So they're, it's down pretty close to Meadows Farms Golf Course, and it's not too far from the Gauntlet, and which is, I guess, on Route um, 17, maybe not Route 3, but Route 17, just slightly northwest of Fredericksburg. And I, there's Virginia Oaks, which is also down there too. So there's, this is an interesting course. Now, I like this course. I will tell you up front that I, I gave it a B plus in my ratings. Not because I thought it was such a great course. Not because I thought it was a Whiskey Creek or because I thought it was a PB Dye or, or a Little Bennett or some of these other courses that I've also given... Uh, a B plus, not because I think it's it's one of those courses. This is a reasonably short course. The course is, I would say, I, I lost my scorecard, so I don't have it off the top of my head. I would say it's about a 6,300 yard course. It's probably a little bit shorter or about as, as much, no more than is than Goose Creek. Okay. But the thing about this course is it, it doesn't really have a lot that is annoying and it has a lot about it that is pleasant and enjoyable. And I think a lot of courses, and this is sort of a half neighborhood course, half not neighborhood course. It's a, it's um it's it reminds me of a lot of different courses where on a few of the holes, some of the holes, you know, maybe most of the holes, there are no houses or maybe one or two houses at the most in the view. And then other holes there are you know, like a row of houses along the side. And on this course, the number 10, there's a row of houses on both sides of the fairway for number 10. In fact, it's just barely wide enough to play comfortably. There are no trees or fences or anything between the, the course and the houses. And on number 10, you have to be careful not to hit someone's house. I mean, it's that simple. It's not like it's right there off the fairway but it's definitely reachable from the tee box. So you have to be careful enough not to hit somebody's other house. But the same thing goes for a few other holes on the course. And even um, there are still holes in the course where there's trees between the course and the houses, but it's not like they're way back behind the trees. Okay. So the thing is about half of this course is half of this course, you will see some houses and even in some places they will sort of infringe on play especially number 10. And on the other half of the course, you won't see many houses. You'll see like uh, three houses at the most for most of the front side of the course, except for number one, which goes, um, is a curving downhill crescent hole. And along the left side of the fairway, there's a row of houses. So, but behind trees again, behind a fence and everything, but they're there and you have to be you know, you'll, you'll be aware of it and so forth and so on. But I would say for about 75 to 60 to 60% 60 to 75% of the course, houses are not even a factor in terms of, you know, being in your, in your concern for 15% of the course, the houses are a factor and they're definitely a concern. And for maybe a hole or two, they're a real concern. Okay. You really have to worry about them possibly hitting into them or something like that. Certainly number 10, certainly number 14, I believe it is where you cross the road again. I would, I think that's like 13 or 14. Okay. And there's a few holes, holes where you do have to worry about houses, put it that way, but rarely, if ever, do they actually sit off the tee box or off the car path to the point where you are, you know, they're literally a, a factor in your play. Okay. Not to say that they never are, but rarely is that the case. Okay. So I think I've, I've sort of had to work through this a few times and I think that probably a good approach to this course is to take the whole, the courses that you are aware of. Let's say you've played courses enough courses that you're kind of aware of what public courses are like in, in general, the strong, the strengths and weaknesses of some courses and you know, the different types of courses there are, but even if you're not, I'll get to these, 
details when we get to them. But the general sense of this course that you want to do, I think, is to take all the courses that you know and blend them. Put them in a blender and blend them together. Then take something that filters out the bad parts, pour it through that, and what you have left is this course. The strengths of this course are it has good verticality. Houses are, are a modest at worst problem on this course. There is enough water in play to make water a concern on enough holes. There is not really much of a carry on any of the holes. However, some of the approach shots do have carries over water and some of them have carries to a green, which is right next to water and things like that. And occasionally you hit a tee shot over some water or over some waste, but usually not anything significant in terms of a carry. However, it's long enough to be interesting, but tight enough to be a challenge. There's no question that you will hit a fair enough, fair number of shots that are, there's length in play, but you still have to hit with control, good control to stay out of the woods or waste to the left or right of the fairway. And maybe even occasionally the, the, the woods way off the course where there's a, a river, there's a river that runs by two or three of the holes and it's certainly reachable from the tee box. It's certainly reachable from the fairway. You have to be careful enough to do that, to, to stay out of that water. There are some creeks across different parts of the uh, course, you know, run across the fairway, things like that on like three or four holes. And there's, you know, some good sized water fronting the green on a few of the holes. However, I would still say if it wasn't for the verticality, this course would be challenged on the short side of things because it is not long enough really to compare to a lot of courses. It just isn't. However, on the other hand, you don't have a lot of road noise. There's not a lot of times where you're crossing roads through a neighborhood or something. I there's some, but not a lot. And the thing about it is it has a lot of strengths, but some problems, not big problems, but still some problems. Enough to keep it realistic. It's not heaven on earth. It's not, it's not, you know, a golden golf course, you know, where you can drive around for hours and forget about what's going on in terms of other cars and houses and other people, but it's still a good solid course. And I got on the course today at three o'clock. The guy let me play twilight. He gave me two hours to play. I ran through 18 holes, um, got most of the holes in even so. I think I played the whole, I played all the 18 holes. I think I skipped a couple of the par threes on the backside because I was running low on time, but in general, it's a fun course. This is the important part. In general, it's a fun course. It's not a big course, but it's fun. It's not free of worries, but it's mostly enjoyable. And so I have to recommend a course. I have to give it a B plus. It has a nice clubhouse. Nice environment, nice neighborhood, nice everything. You can still go out and hit big shots, but you got to stay in control. And, and, and it, I couldn't complain. Bermuda grass, nice greens, everything. It had everything I really needed in a golf course and a good challenge. That's Rapidian Golf Course in Locust Grove, which is just a, maybe 10 miles northwest of Fredericksburg. It's down there, but it, if you come from, from Culpeper, it's a nice drive down. Thoroughly enjoyed the round. Rapidian Golf Course.